Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. I'm here at Intercountry Adoption New Zealand. Now, fun fact is, they actually helped facilitate my adoption in the early 1990s. And, you know, my life has pretty much changed from the help of these guys here. So right now I'm going to go and meet Wendy Hawk, who is the director of ICANNS, and she's going to explain the history of ICANNS, everything about it, and of course about intercountry adoption. So let's go. Hello, Wendy. Hello, you see there? Hi, Hi Alex. Good to see you. Good to see you too. It's really nice to be here at ICANNS after, you know, it's been a while. And as you know, my, my adoption was all facilitated through you guys. That's right. I remember your parents very well, from Wangarei. So, so when was ICANNS established? Well, ICANNS began in about 1989, but at that stage they were helping people to adopt from Central and South America. And then, of course, Romania hit the news, and ICANNS started helping families adopt from Romania. 1992, Romania had stopped, and we came along, and we started working with Russia. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your family. Well, we had one child and that was the end of the line for us and we, would, we wanted more children. So we decided to adopt. First we were thinking of Romania, but when that closed, an opportunity came up to adopt in Russia. And we came home with two wonderful daughters. So that was such a good experience that two years later we got a bigger van and adopted two boys. And then we were five. Every time I come to ICANNS I get a little bit nervous because I see, you know, what you guys are doing is incredible and it's always inspiring to see what you do, to helping families, because I look up to that and I think it's pretty incredible. When you've been there and seen the orphanages, yeah. you can't walk away and not be changed by it. My dear friend Ludmila in Russia has often said, the caregivers in the orphanage work really hard and care for the children well, but when they leave at 16 or 17, that's when the problems start. Yeah. And I can't bear the thought of a child leaving with no one to stand beside them while they face the challenges of life. Do you believe that adoption is a head start for the child? It is, and even though there are challenges in adoption, it's hard for adopted people to, to put together sometimes their identity, they at least have someone to stand beside them to help them. They would face the same challenges if they came out of an orphanage at eight, 16, 17, 18, um, with no one. I know that in the 1990s, adoption between Russia and New Zealand started. However, it stopped in 2013, is that right? That's right. The last adoptions from Russia were in 2013 because there was a change in the New Zealand law and Russia required us to sign an agreement uh, saying that we would respect the Russian law for Russian children. Often there's cultural differences in inter-country adoption and we just have to respect the culture of the child. And so because our laws are incompatible and New Zealand wasn't prepared to abide by Russian law, adoption stopped. So what are all the countries that ICANNS facilitate from? Well, these days we work with Thailand, um, Philippines, India and Lithuania. So a bit closer to home, a little bit warmer countries too. Not quite the cold weather of snowy Russia, uh, but um, those are the countries we're currently working with. Is the adoption process still quite complex than what it was in the 1990s or is it What's changed? That's the big question. What has changed? Largely technology. In those old days we had to use faxes. <laughs> we had to run up to the video shop even sometimes to send faxes and now it's so much easier with email and faster couriers. And the process with immigration has become a lot smoother. Uh, they've really worked on making it very easy for the families coming in. But you know the challenges are still there for the families. You've got language change, travel, Especially time frames, waiting is very hard for people who've longed for children for years. That's very hard, and uh, people find that probably the, the hardest thing. Yeah. Mm. So, Wendy, when do you think is the right time for an adoptive person to do a search for the birth family or birth relatives? There's no right age. It's when the person wants to. It really needs to meet the adopted person's needs, not just be driven by the birth uh, by the adoptive family. We find some children are very curious when they're very young. Others couldn't care less until they're quite mature adults. And you have to respect that. I, I, I know that a lot of people sometimes don't hear about themselves being adopted until later on in life. And it could also be a thing from the parents wanting to protect their children. But I know that it's also about having that trust from your family. And some parents say, well, my child isn't asking, therefore I won't talk, they don't need to know. 
But I don't believe that. Some children don't ask because they don't know how to ask or what to say. So it's up to the parent to provide the information. We encourage them to have a life book and photos and to just talk, give the child information. My, my adoption myself was facilitated all through ICANN's and I know that you possibly have some information that, of mine here, but what information does ICANN's hold for an adoptee who has gone through ICANN's? That's varied over the years. These days we're able to keep far more information. Uh, we scan all the documents and keep a lot, but um, from the early days the parents had the responsibility for keeping most of the information. But for some adopted people we do have the court order that um, gave the adoption. Sometimes we have the original birth certificate, but not always. It, it's variable. There again I believe that the adoptive parents have the responsibility to preserve that information and make it available. It's the adoptive person's right to have that. Thank you so much, Wendy, for giving your time to sit down and talk about this because I believe it is a very important topic to talk about. And what you guys are doing is incredible and I hope that you guys will just, I know you will, keep going with it because what you're doing is helping a lot of families and adoptees. We appreciate your work. We've waited for years for adoptive people to set up their own support group and you've done it. Helping people out. Absolutely. It's good to have a community, I believe. Absolutely. It's so good to talk to someone who actually understands what you've been through, no matter what it is in life. So for adopted people to talk to someone like you and to share, it's very valuable.